Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Two guys who will never be Speaker of the House. What's up, kids? You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Gag Order Violation Cheeseman. And this is Chad Kingmaker Sowash. And on this episode, we're talking radency acquisition, employment heroes, and intimate conversations. Let's do this. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. You cannot leave. Euro Chad is back. I am back. I'm back in full force. Oh, it's it's glorious. It is glorious. Your 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 costume this year, Euro Chad. That's what I'm going as for Halloween <laughs> this year. And every Euro day Chad. until next year. <laughs> yes, until I have to come back in January. Then it's all downhill from there. Then back yeah. up. Now. It's fine. Yeah. It's good to have Euro Chad back. It's good to have Euro. So so I got I got to throw back. something at you before we start. Uh, okay. You probably didn't catch this. But this Mm -hmm. is kind of blowing up the socials. Uh, There's a new survey asking women where they do not, do not want to be taken on a first date. And a lot of guys are chiming in and giving an opinion on this. Have you seen this list? I have not. But why are guys chiming in? I don't understand. (laughs) This is great. So this is a list of where women say do not take us on a first date. You ready? Okay. Uh, Cheesecake Factory, Applebee's, Chili's, Chipotle. Come on now. Uh, Olive Garden, The Movies. Your house, any fast food chain, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, Wingstop, Red Lobster, any buffet, I guess that includes Vegas, IHOP, mm. Denny's, The Gym, why would you go to a gym on a first date, uh, church, Starbucks, coffee dates, ice cream dates, family functions, movie nights, i.e. Netflix and chill, uh, yeah. somewhere that requires a long drive, bowling, nightclubs, hookah bar, a bar for just <laughs> drinks, Waffle House, or sporting events. So where the hell else can you go? Like right. coffee's out, sporting events, uh, Starbucks, come on. Yeah, I mean, this is why you don't look at surveys because they're fucking stupid. Uh, <laughs> ask her where she wants to go. Obviously, don't take her to a fucking franchise. I mean, give, give, give me a break. I mean, you know, I, Applebee's, are you kidding yeah. me? I mean, come on. I love That's the gym. Ridiculous. Is that a thing? Let's go to the gym. Apparently, fuck. I, Apparently don't it's a thing. I haven't been on a date in a very long time. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. All right, let's uh, <laughs> shout out. Let's get to some shout out, shall we? Hit it, hit it. All right, uh, we talked about the Martech. We did a who'd you rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, some yep. people chimed in positively and negatively, but I wanted to point out that the Martech is doing marketing right. Uh, we talk a lot about companies. We're generally as complimentary as we are, mm-hmm. you know, critical about companies. Yeah. If the media says something good about you, like run with it, put it on social, make a, make a meme, make charts, do a sound bite, like do bit, like do everything you can to get yeah. mileage out of this. And the nice things that we said about the MarTech, they ran with it. Like you two, <laughs> like they put an image together, put your quote on the image, put your face on it, had mm. a big, uh, big, long comment about it. Uh, it was great. So we have a lot of companies listening. If we say something nice about you, go with it. 
like get it for as much as you possibly can. So shout out yeah. to the MarTech and their marketing team for for getting it right when we said something nice about them. Yeah, and and Yardstick, the one who was not <laughs> the one we would rather, uh, the uh -huh. CEO commented on my LinkedIn and said, uh, quote, Yardstick here. I won't dwell on the items you got wrong about us on the pod. Care to have us on the pod to clear up the details, end quote. And I was like, of course, come on to Firing Squad. Uh -huh. I would love to see Martech and Yardstick on their own firing squads because uh -huh. who would you rather is kind of like a, it's it's two a.m. at the bar, okay? Yeah, it's I mean you're you're picking up scraps at that point in some yeah. cases. In some cases, yeah, Yardstick uh, should be careful what it asks for. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first shout out goes to Child Care at Work. Uh, I guess uh, UPS is expanding their emergency daycare after a pilot program helped it avoid 120, count them, 120 unplanned absences and reduce turnover in the pilot program from 31% to 4%. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. So UPS will expand the program to additional shifts in the California uh, pilot site and some... Uh, Pennsylvania facilities this quarter. Uh, everyone cheers UPS while Patagonia has provided on-site daycare for 40 fucking years, kids. Uh, shout out to companies like UPS who are finally waking the fuck up while Patagonia continues to be an example of giving a shit about their employees for decades, not just when it's fashionable. So shout out to Child Care at Work. All right, all right. By the way, I'm still waiting for our free Patagonia swag uh, to come in for all these nice things that we, we say about Patagonia. Uh, well, from one company to another that we talk about quite a bit, LinkedIn had some big layoffs uh, last week that we talked about. Layoffs. And they finally reported, so things aren't uh, exactly as bad as they seem. LinkedIn's revenue for the fiscal first quarter ending on September 30th increased mm -hmm by 8% year over year and mm. constant currency reaching $285 million. Uh, growth was primarily driven by the talent solutions segment. While the results exceeded expectations, LinkedIn continued to experience negative year over year bookings due to a weak hiring environment in some key sectors, i.e. technology. For the upcoming second fiscal quarter, Microsoft expects LinkedIn's revenue growth to be in the mid single digits with a focus on talent solutions and marketing solutions. So a little bit of best of both worlds or to tail yeah. of two cities on that one. Oh yeah. People are hiring less, but LinkedIn's still making a boatload of money on their talent solutions. Shout out Imagine. to LinkedIn. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine. Uh, shout out to another company, Dollar General. This is not really a shout out. This is a, uh, what the actual fuck were they thinking moment. Uh, which goes out to Dollar General, who was fined by the EEOC for requiring applicants at its Bessemer, Alabama distribution center to share past and present medical conditions of family members, such as cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, all according to the 2017 EEOC case. Dollar General also required applicants to pass a post offer pre-employment medical exam that screened out qualified individuals with disabilities. Holy shit. Uh, the EEOC said in a statement, quote, Dollar General rescinded job offers to applicants whose blood pressure exceeded 160 over 100 or who had less than 2050 vision in one eye, even if those impairments did not prevent the applicant from safely performing the job, end quote. This is a what the actual fuck were you thinking moment out to Dollar General. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> all I want to know is why Dollar General wanted to know about my penis enlargement surgery. That's that's all. Hi, Poppy. That's all. And I'm that was at the cash about. register, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and restocking. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we talked about Patagonia, who will never send us free stuff, but we oh, at Chad and Cheese I love free stuff. are always sending free stuff to our listeners. Uh, we're talking rum with plum if it's your birthday. Mm. We're talking free beer from our friends at Aspen Tech Labs. We're talking yeah. about a bourbon selection from you and me uh, from our, our, our good friends at Text Colonel. Great seeing them uh, in Paris last week. And of course, yeah. T-shirts by our friends at JobGit, but you can't win if you don't play. Head out to chadcheese.com today. Click that free link, put in your information, 
and following that will be free what time is it from chat what time and cheese it? what time is it what time is it, it might be it might be time it might be time because we mentioned plum ah can you feel the tension so it, in the air right now might be time for birthdays i know i can i can feel it all the way down in my plum that's so, right that's right we miss birthdays because we're on the road so let's do some catching up on some birthdays uh celebrating another year around the sun our friend dennis tupper who needs a little birthday love because his, his fantasy <laughs> team isn't doing all that great. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Ryan Moffat, Garrett Friedman, Sean Horton, Cammie Owens, Jonathan Stelling, Jeremy Roberts, Heather Cochran, Dr. John Sullivan, Stephen O'Donnell, one of our, our favorite Scots out there because we, we love the Scots. And last but not least, born on Halloween. That's right, our friend... Punkage Jindal, co-founder at Sense, celebrates his birthday on Halloween. So everybody that's out there this week, happy, happy birthday to everyone. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Well, it's time for events, kids, which uh, is brought to you by Shaker Recruitment Marketing. That's right. Wherever Chad and Cheese go, we take Shaker with us. That's right. Uh, So coming early December, 4th to the 6th, TA Tech Europe is uh, going to be happening in London. And I'm going to be there emceeing with uh, Kirsty Kelly. So uh, if you're in London, you're going to be at TA Tech. Can't wait to see you there. Not to mention, we're probably going to stay about a week or so. So uh, let's take a look at some dinners, maybe some podcasts. Let's get some content out while I'm in London. Uh, and we're freezing our asses off together. Can't wait to see you there. Love the love the deep content. Just the tea. All right. Well. <laughs> That's right. Fantasy football update, everybody. Fantasy football with Chad and Cheese brought to you by our friends at Factory Fix. Here's the leaderboard heading into, I think, week eight uh, Mm -hmm. of fantasy football. Number one, still staying strong. That goes to Michelle Sargent Slaughter. Number two, Marcy Playground (laughs) Mall, followed by Dean Kane Osner, followed by Joe Biden Dixon. Number five spot goes to Chad Lowe, Sowash. Number six, Jasper Gemstone Spanjart. Number seven, Jagged Little Jill Patterson, who I think kicked your ass this past week. Number eight, Brent Crude Losey, followed by Funky Cold Medina Perro. Number 10, Criss Cross Kristen Urban. Number 11, Joel Embiid Cheeseman. And 11. In number 12 spot, Dennis the Menace Tupper. That is uh, another fantasy such football an amateur. Update. Hey, hey, if, if yeah. I have to go two and four for the Browns to be four and two, well, I can I can swallow that. That's <laughs> that's not the worst thing in the world, well, Chad. All I have to do is say, Jill, you got lucky. Last week I was in Paris <laughs> and I totally spaced my uh my, my lineup and i had two i think at least two that were on a bye week so yeah she kicked my ass that's not gonna happen again yeah i lost it <laughs> by single digits again i think six points because Ooh. fucking tj hawkinson decided to have the best monday night football game of his life oh well anyway <laughs> topics we're having fun no matter what uh at fantasy football so before we get to the news chad Yes. Layoffs. That's right. We got some layoffs to talk about. Bullhorn has laid off 9% of its workforce. Uh, CEO and founder Art Pappas announced on October 19th in a blog post citing the downturn in the staffing industry following the, quote, explosive growth, end quote, observed coming out of the pandemic. Also with layoffs is Nomad Health, a healthcare staffing startup, in case you missed it. They've cut 25% of its staff, according to Business Insider. They have previously cut 17% of its workforce. That was back in February. Ouch. This was a former favorite startup of mine, Chad. Any comment on what's happening with layoffs at Bullhorn and Nomad Health? Yeah, Bullhorn, I mean, there's a couple of things. I think in in the uh, tech space for for staffing companies, um, we need more competition. I mean, I, I really think we need more competition to be able to, to push the market even harder. I mean, we have Bullhorn and then there are, you have Bullhorn and then you've got everybody else. Yep. Uh, so I think we, we need more competition there really to push the market harder. 
Um, yes, the, the, uh, the, the landscape itself isn't great from a staffing standpoint, but that doesn't matter. You should be automating, you should be building tech stacks and you should be, you know, bolstering your margins. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, th there's that on the nomad, nomad health side of the house. This one is really confusing because we have, at least here in the U S we have a, a great need for nursing right we have a yep. great need for healthcare i mean it's it's amazing that an organization like this unless they're literally just trying to right size because they became bloated which i could yep. i can understand um, i can't imagine that there there aren't great opportunities still out there for nomad health so maybe this is more of a right sizing because they were bloated but again you know how i feel about that if a ceo cuts that many people they should cut the ceo <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is one of those businesses, it's like trucking, right? Like, if you can't make this yeah. thing work, uh, it's time to take your ball and go home, uh, particularly yeah. with yeah. the flexibility that they were giving travel nurses and other other uh, healthcare professionals who want more yeah. flexibility, who want more of a gig economy. I really thought Nomad Health was going to was just going to crush it and be a, yeah. you know, be a model for, for their businesses coming through. This is not a good sign. I mean, laying off... 25% and then 17% earlier this year of that. That's yeah. really, really bad. That's either like super shitty management or this business just doesn't work because their baby, baby boomers getting old every day and they're yeah. not getting any younger that need healthcare. So some of the others that came out that do this, we haven't heard layoffs from them yet. So mm -hmm. we should watch this carefully. Some of the other sort of gig economies or flexible work platforms for healthcare workers like let's keep our eye on those and see if this is a trend otherwise nomad health what the hell are you doing jeez yeah geez, get I, I i i'm i'm again utterly surprised that a ceo i mean because this is if you take a look at it, it no matter what it falls on the ceo's head period and if you were cutting 17 25 percent i mean you got to get new leadership in there it, yeah. it's it, you know it's not that we don't like the guy for god's sakes it's just there's got to be ramifications for shit like that for mismanagement. Does not look that's, good. That's mismanagement. Not look good at no matter. No. Uh, well, speaking of 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 news, Chad, let's get to Raid and See, the artist formerly known as TMP. They've acquired Brazen, the fine purveyor of recruiting event software. In case you missed it, the terms of the deal were not disclosed. This acquisition expands Radency's cloud-based marketing and technology offerings by incorporating Brazen's tools for managing virtual and in-person events, creating microsites, enabling live chat, and automating candidate communication. Brazen was founded back in 2007 and had previously raised $13.2 million over 10 funding rounds. In case you missed it, Radency also acquired CRM vendor Ascendify and candidate referral solution FirstBird in the not so distant past. Chad, what are your thoughts on the move by Radency? Uh, so virtual job fairs. I mean, hey, Radency, 2010 called and they want their tech stack back. Uh, it's This is fucking ridiculous. Brazen founded, as you'd said, in 2007. Why buy a product that puts us all back into Zoom fatigue after COVID? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So acquiring legacy tech like Brazen isn't the move I would have expected Radency to make. I would have expected a company like Radency to be looking at startups like Vet, mm -hmm. uh, Tadio, Hiring Branch, to just name a few examples of it, technologies that we think are more future hiring process. I mean, it's it, it's not virtual job fairs. I mean, that's not the future. Screening, interviewing, proving that a candidate has the actual skills that their resume says, that's the future. And we can do those things now. So yeah. it just, it, it blows my mind. And it almost feels like Radency has lost their swagger. Uh, and here's an example. Uh, let's look at how Radency is currently creating narratives around positioning themselves in the market. Number one, uh, <laughs> Radency's new byline is from high to apply. Okay, so from high to apply, it doesn't scream end to end hiring platform. It screams no. top of funnel point solution, right? So that, that that's one, and that's just basic. That's basic shit. It's like that's that that's not you. Why are you trying? Th that doesn't make any sense. Here's another one. Quote from the press release. Uh, quote: Decreasing cost to uh, to hire by thirty percent, 
reducing time to hire by 25%, end quote. So how do those numbers impact the actual business? As, as I've said on this podcast almost every fucking week, the C-suite and the board doesn't give a shit about those numbers. If you're reducing time to hire by 20%, how much faster are those people getting into the seats, right? What impact does that have on the bottom line? How much actual revenue does that represent? Cost per hire and time to hire are cute little statistics, but if you want to help your clients vie for more budget that actually ends up in your pocket, you have to get to the numbers the C-suite and the board actually give a shit about EBITDA, margins, sales, retention, wallet share. If you can't tie those numbers to those, those big corporate board types of numbers, then get the fuck out of the boardroom, man. Um, radency, radency should be a much more evolved platform at this point. Uh, it, it just, it, it really feels weird as we take a look at their marketing and then you take a look at the actual, this acquisition in itself. It, it just, it's mind boggling to me. I don't get it. That escalated quickly. I'm going to blame this all on AppCast, Chad. Uh, <laughs> AppCast buys Baird. Uh, agencies freak out. They've always had this question of buy, build, or partner. They tried to build in the early days, including TMP slash Radency. Uh, they realized that they don't have the engineers to keep up uh, with the products of actual companies that are building this stuff. So, yeah. so building wasn't really a thing they could do. So partnering was great. Let's partner, like maybe white label some shit. Uh, it'll be fantastic. And then, and then AppCast happens. They buy Baird. They become AppCast One. Uh, all the other agencies freak out and go, okay, if we can't build it, we, we, we're like partnering is a huge risk now. We got to like buy shit. Let's go buy some companies. And Brazen, let's be honest, was probably on the clearance rack at TJ Maxx. Raid and C, oh, yeah. you know, Raid and C walked in and, and bought it for 20, you know, 50% off or whatever. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a trend that we see. At I Marshalls. think, yeah, you're going to see, you're going to see agencies like, who can we buy? Who can we take off the table? Uh, we've seen, you know, ATS is kind of do this with text recruiting and, you know, buying canvas and I said, right. you know, so, so like this whole, like partnering thing is in question. And I think agencies are, are a little bit scared and emotional right now. And radency to me is an example of that emotional decision-making. We're going to see more agencies buy companies. Uh, they're going to put more companies in their portfolio and have a brand, uh, you know, brand of house or house of brands. Yeah. And this is going to be something that you see going forward. If you're looking to build a startup, kids, build something that an agency just bought and then create a, a copycat of that company. And in 12 to 18 months, you will sell to another competing agency at top dollar. So if you're looking to start a company, uh, just uh, make a new Brazen or, uh, or something else because agencies are looking to buy and they might be coming for you if you create the right solution. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, I, I mean, it's, TMP slash Radency. I mean, they they bought a, a programmatic platform after Stepstone bought AppCast, right? So I mean, they, they they've been they've been reacting each time. I don't think this has any reaction whatsoever. This is again, this is legacy tech. Why do you even buy a virtual job fair platform in the first place? There are so many amazing point solutions that are out there today that are like cheats to being, being able to get qualified, proven individuals into your candidate slates. Yeah. Th what does this do? This slows down the process. Oh, we've got to wait. We're going to have a, we're, we're going to have a, a, a job fair next week. Can you come to our job fair? No, because I'll have a fucking job by then. This is so old school. <clears throat> it doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't get it, dude. I, I seriously don't get it. And I really believe that Radency has lost their swagger. And by the way, they we mentioned a Cinefine first bird. Does 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 Radency have any track record of integrating these new tools effectively? I haven't seen it. Uh, I haven't seen customers talk about it. I mean, maybe employee I'm wrong. referrals. I mean, employee but, referrals. I mean, I, I mean, it's a thing. It, but I, it's a know, thing. I, but companies <laughs> trip over more employee referrals. I mean, it's it, again. It, it, it's an agency that's buying things that seems yep. like, you know, 2010 when everything was really, you know, hot and hot and bothered.
but they're not the newer tech that's out there today is is about automation it's about quickness it's about targeting it's about skills and which this has nothing to do with at all Chad, this 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 news just came over the wire recruitix has bought a qr code company it's it's crazy <laughs> how this is happening already already so fast jeez, jeez that was a joke geez. kids that yeah, was a joke yeah well, let's, <laughs> let's get to our next story that's right baby the unicorns the unicorns are back and they're they're coming from down under this time yeah. australian tech startup wow. employment hero has secured nearly 140 million pounds in funding valuing the company at over 1 billion pounds the funds will support its expansion in the uk where it provides software for small and medium-sized businesses to manage payrolls, employee integration, and recruitment. The company's choice of London as its European base is seen as a vote of confidence in the UK's tech sector and is aligned with the government's effort to attract foreign businesses. Thanks, Brexit. Chad, throw some shrimp on the barbie. Pop open a Foster's and give us your thoughts on this news. Yeah, some, I mean, some pretty impressive numbers, first and foremost. I mean, getting that kind of cash is that, that, that's pretty fucking impressive. Uh, two weeks in a row, I think we've actually talked about uh, tech companies down under who, who have gotten funding. So, you know, good for, good for Australia. Uh, Employment Hero says that they have 300,000 companies across Australia using their product. Uh, not too shabby. And already 20,000 in the UK. Uh, mm -hmm. P PE firm TCV uh, actually had past investments with Airbnb, ByteDance, and now they're getting into hiring and payroll. I mean, it just doesn't seem to be as exciting at all. Anyway, um, building tech for the SMB market is much easier than building for enterprise. SMB doesn't require a ton of customizations like enterprise. So you can build a standardized platform and the SMB market will just be happy that they aren't using spreadsheets anymore. So the hardest part about this though, is that being able to actually target those SMBs and get major uh, market penetration, top of mind uh, types of marketing. So in the financial year of 2021, over 365,000 new businesses entered the Australian market, right? So there's, there, there's tons, tons of small businesses. By the end of the financial year, uh, they had 2.4 million in total small businesses. In the UK, they generate around 700,000 new businesses a year. So there's some great opportunity that's there. The hardest part though, and you can, you can see this with the zip recruiters of the world and whatnot, when you can't spend money anymore to continue pe penetrating the market, we as humans have very short memories. Uh, but hopefully that 140 million pounds will uh, give them a little boost and they'll be able to get some market penetration in the UK, which I also like that focus too, going to the UK instead of coming directly to the US. I think it's, I think it's a, a much easier market to dig into. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, in an uncertain world of war, political uh, upheaval, I could go on, uh, inflation rates, money's not free. It's good to see our space raise some big bucks here in the, in yeah. the last few months. We talked about Hi Bob, uh, Harry recently, uh, and now these guys. Apparently the one platform to rule them all is still really popular. Uh, this company's on a tear. This company is like Crocodile Dundee, uh, and, a, and a big old oil can of Fosters in them because they have a lot of a lot of uh, chestiness. Go to their site; uh, it's a party. Go to their employment brand stuff. I mean, it's like it's it looks like a fun company. They're partying. They're they're looking for a good time. Uh, in the last two years, they've increased headcount ninety three percent. They're all remote. You talked about their customer base right on their website. It's like. 300,000 clients can't be wrong. Something yeah. uh, like that. They make claims of being the first, the world's first employment super app, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> I mean, they are living it. They're vim and vigor. They're kicking ass. Like it's fun to watch. Uh, very Australian in demeanor. Uh, Australia is like America's younger, younger sibling, you know, South the border. I think we have a lot in common. Rebellion. The question I have, uh, I also agree with with the European focus. You know, I think they're going to run into Personio and Hi Bob and some others. So that'll be interesting to watch. Okay. The question I have is, 
who the hell ever comes out of Australia and becomes a huge success? Like recent memory, we got Vervo, uh, Sapia, Video My Job, even Seek can't get the hell out of out of APAC. So uh, if they can do it, more power to them. And at least yeah. from from the looks of it, they think they can. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch. I want them to come to America because they're going to have a good time uh, in the US of A. Until <laughs> then, I guess maybe we'll have to see them at Wreckfest at yes. Nebworth uh, to have a good time. All right, Chad, from the party in Australia, let's go to uh, the Amazon. Well, Agility Robotics <laughs> is collaborating with Amazon to test its bipedal robot, Digit, at Amazon Robotics Research Facility in Seattle. Digit is designed for logistics and can handle items in warehouses while working alongside employees. Amazon will initially use Digit for tote recycling, aiming to improve workplace safety and reduce repetitive <clears throat> tasks. The robot is tailored for human-centric environments, and this partnership expands their collaboration with Agility, already part of the Amazon Industrial Innovation Fund. Digit's initial deployment is expected in 2025. Well, from Amazon to Cruise, the driverless car company, Chad, the California Department of Motor Vehicles suspended Cruise's autonomous driving permit, effectively halting its robot taxi service in San Francisco, the DMV said that Cruz's vehicles aren't safe for public operation, and the company has misrepresented information related to the safety of the technology of the vehicles. Cruz is majority controlled by General Motors. So, Chad, your thoughts, Amazon, Cruz, is this a win or a loss for humankind? Well, I mean, if you think about it, uh, way back in the lost in space days, right? The, the black and white uh, we're robot. Everybody, everybody loved robot, right? And I think as humans, uh, we really want to see robots, right? It's it's the 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 the, the, the sky the sci fi that we've all grown up with. Mm -hmm. um, but then we start talking about possibly, you know, infusing those those humanoid robots with Gen AI, and then you've got a movie on your hands, right? All you need is Will Smith as a lead actor. We've all seen this movie before. But uh, seriously, we're getting into iRobot territory here. Mm -hmm. The pace of algorithms are developing and evolving at an amazing rate. Uh, the thing is, can the hardware keep up with it on the robotic side of the house? Uh, if it can, I think we're going to see some amazing innovation. Uh, but then also at the same time, can we start talking about universal basic income, for God's sakes? I mean, th this is going to be a need for some people in parts of the uh, uh, parts of the country as we see manufacturing taking over by robots mm -hmm. uh they're going to be much like italy you go into southern italy they have a poverty problem because the government hasn't focused on economic development in that area to bring them jobs so what did they do they had you know somewhat of a universal basic income so anyway we're going to have to be talking about a lot of these issues from an economic and a societal standpoint because of these sexy ass robots. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening, you can't see what we're talking about, but I encourage everyone listening to go to Google and search Amazon uh, robots, uh, the company that, that uh, they partner with. Cause these, these are, you're right. These are like science fiction yeah. robot humans lifting boxes uh doing what uh humans can do but mm -hmm. doing it with metal and uh and ai so scary yes which is appropriate because it is <laughs> halloween but this is this is the future this is like when we went to the sphere and said oh this is going to be a thing yeah these robots are going to be a thing and by the way amazon has apparently run out of people to employ uh we've talked about that before that they can't hire yeah. any more people they can't like you know, Shitty they can't jobs. produce, we can't clone people to go work at Amazon. So robots are the next best thing. They don't take time off. They don't need breaks. They don't go on strike. Uh, they don't pee in trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> 
like it's a perfect scenario and probably what Bezos and company have been wanting to do for, for many, many years. It's finally coming to fruition. Uh, you can't look at it and say like, that's the future and humans are kind of screwed um, if, if this takes hold, which it probably will. The UBI thing is really interesting uh, to me. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of studies recently about like, if you give people $1,000, what happens? Oh, they spend it. They put it right back in the economy, uh, yes. which is a good thing. And they tend to to buy things like, you know, pay for rent and food and things like that. Yeah, now, because robots aren't going to buy shit. Robots aren't going to buy shit. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think it's going to be a hurdle because we've also seen where people take drugs when you give them free money. So I don't know what kind of, um, you know, guidelines or posts or safety uh, things you put in, like to make people not get drugs. If you give them cash, mm -hmm. like you have to spend it on food. I don't know, but that's, that's something I think that's going to happen. The cruise thing to me is just stupid. Uh, from what I can tell they're in trouble because like somebody fell out of a car and then they hit the, the driverless car hit that person or it wasn't like a normal, I'm walking across the street and I got hit. It seems like an extreme it was a hit example. And run. It was a hit and run. So an, an actual human hit somebody it threw that person into the path into of the a car, cruise right? vehicle. Yeah. yeah. And then the cruise vehicle um, ran them over. So, I mean, again, it was, it was humans fucking things up in the first place. Uh, and then secondly, the company just isn't trans. consequences for for return to office and we have seen the, the i mean so i'm going to take a different angle here real quick we've seen the lowest unemployment rates for individuals with disabilities because of their ability to do their jobs remotely so instead of thinking of the segments of, of people with disabilities as charity cases they've more than proven they're vital a very vital segment of the workforce only now to be told unless you can come into the office, you're worthless to us. So just think of that for a minute. Companies 
pounding the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging drum over and over, and then forcing people back into the office who can't work from the office. And then what about women? We just heard that story. What about women in the workforce? Many women pulled themselves out of the workforce because of the lack of childcare benefits when they go into the office. So again, DEIB takes over and it takes another shot on the chin because old white dudes want everybody back in the office like it's 1930. I really believe if companies gave two shits about diversity, equity, um, inclusion, belonging, they wouldn't be focusing on this. They'd be focusing on being able to embrace remote, hybrid, on-site childcare. Um, for me, this really hurts the workforce and not to mention the relationship that somebody has with their employee, right? I mean, like she was just talking about, you know, working not just with at AWS, but with her clients and having those relationships, right? And then also being able to have those relationships with their kids, which is incredibly important. Those are things that companies just aren't taking into account, not to mention, obviously, being able to, to really kill the individuals with disabilities and then uh, working women who really just need autonomy. This is, this is not a, it's not a good look or I think a good strategy. All right, dude, work from home was over as far as I'm concerned when Zoom, Zoom told people to get their ass back into the office. You remember Elon Musk talking about this being a moral question. Uh, in the meantime of all this, stock prices have gone down. The market's tanking. Shareholders are talking about get shit back up to speed, layoffs, get back in the office. This is just, this is what's happening. This is just the world that we live in. Uh, the old white guys in the ivory tower can't be happier uh, than to have this happen and get people back in the office. It's obviously a shame people that were benefiting from work from home, whether it was mothers who, let's be honest, have suffered probably more than anybody with the work or going back to work. Um, people with disabilities, this is hugely awful uh, for people that yeah. were having a great time coding or doing whatever they were doing. Can't working. make it in the office. Can't, you know, just can't do it, right? Just working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an incredible shame. I, you know, to me, hybrid is not remote. To me, hybrid is I still got to live near the office. I still got to go in. I still have to find transportation. So hybrid to me is not like a nice middleman. To me, it's either you're you're pregnant or you're not. You're either remote or you're not. <laughs> um, and I think hybrid is just is just Latin for we'll eventually have you back for five days a week uh, in the office. So for me, this is a huge bummer. I don't know. Get a yes. podcast like us. We're from home all the time. Go to Portugal and, uh, you know, deal with internet issues <laughs> while you record. <laughs> I got nothing. Elon, yeah. fucker. I, I Everyone don't... listens to Elon and follows suit. It makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. But again, as long as we got white, uh, old white guys in the ivory tower, get used to this, the 1930s bullshits, guys. As soon as, as soon as we kick the boomers out, I think we might have a chance. We might have a chance. Someone else happy about the uh, return to work? Only fans, which will oh. take us into our next story. We'll be right back. Chad, are you familiar with, with Riley Reed? I am not. Not until this, uh, this article came across my desk. Yeah, I, I never, I've never heard of her either. <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyway, Riley Reed is launching Clona.ai, an mm -hmm. online platform that allows users to chat with digital versions of adult content creators and porn stars. These avatars are trained with explicit consent from the model's creators, giving them control over the AI companion's conversations. Users can subscribe for $30 per month to engage in, quote, intimate conversations, end quote, with their favorite adult stars. Clona uses Meta's Llama 2 language model as a base and refines it to reflect the personality of the person it's based on. While the AI can engage in explicit conversations, the extent depends on the actor's preferences, not the user's. Despite ethical concerns, Riley Reed believes the sex industry will play a significant role in adapting AI into society, into society. Gee, you think like porn's had a, a big role in everything uh, that technology has come into our life. Chad, what are your thoughts on intimate conversations with porn star AI 
thoughts? So, I mean, the oldest profession, prostitution, as an occupation, dates back to 2400 BCE in Mesopotamia, for God's sakes. That's right, kids. Sex has always been good business. And now women can step away from prostitution and stripping to scale a much safer sex selling business. AI to duplicate versions of yourself. Now that's fucking scale. And at $30 a month or $360 a year, let's say she has 10,000 subscribers. That's mm -hmm. a cool 3.6 mil, baby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, the robots are the sex workers in this model, which is, again, much safer. Uh, she, she knows sex sells, and unlike the prostitutes of Mesopotamia, she doesn't have to worry about some fat dude's grimy mitts on her. So let the algorithm do the work and cash those fucking checks. You cannot leave. <laughs> okay, if you're OnlyFans, you acquire this company or build this shit as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. uh, because Naughty AI uh, is is the future. And the, it, wouldn't you rather, instead of getting naked, like, have a, have a visual that is a human and you and per, someone can bend it, do whatever it wants to do. Uh, you can have chats, talk conversations with Riley Reed. She's as naughty uh, as you want her to be. Um, to me, that's the, that's, that's the future, but you have to be a big porn star to have an audience that people will pay $30 a month for that kind of, of access. Um, while we were on planes this this past couple of weeks and those eight hour flights from Europe uh, mm -hmm. lend a lot of time, I watched the movie Her um, oh, again, which is a 10 year old movie, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah. if you don't know, it's Joaquin, o Joaquin Phoenix, Joaquin, um, yeah. Scarlett Johansson is the voice who should be the porn voice for everything. Uh, but <laughs> but I digress. Anyway, having conversations, relationships like I'm dating an A.I., these are things that's going to happen. Uh, people are lonely, loneliness epidemic. People are going to embrace this thing. It's going to make a ton of money. Crazy. Uh, what was really strange in her was, and so I had forgotten crazy. about this. So he talks, to, he's, she's Scarlett Johansson's in his ear. He mm -hmm. talks to her, like wakes up. She laughs at all his jokes. She thinks he's super smart. So a, a real woman gets involved and she puts Scarlett in her ear and like a video thing so she doesn't talk, but she's talking and Scarlett's in his ear, but he's doing the physical human stuff with, I guess, the equivalent of, of a prostitute. So that's how you get the physical, but still feel you're connected. It really scrambled my brain um, and, and fucked me up a lot. Uh, so anyway, if you're, if you're only fans, to me, this is a big trick. If you don't follow <laughs> suit and buy this company, but if you are, a lonely guy uh, looking for love. This is a huge treat. <laughs> I love Halloween. I worked in a trick or treat joke at the end, Chad. Have a good time in Portugal, whatever the hell they're doing in Portugal for Halloween. Yes. And we out. We out. That's right, baby. It's the Halloween episode of the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The Chad. The Cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar, blue, nacho, pepper jack, Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!